So I was thinking of what to do for today's video and I figured why not do something about how I progressed in photography and how I got better. So today's video is titled, How I Got Better in Photography. But to begin I want to show you guys how exactly I've progressed through my pictures. So I'm going to be showing you guys a picture I took in 2011 when I first began and then I'm going to be showing you guys one of my newest photos in 2015 so you guys can see a side-by-side -side comparison and kind of my own progress. So as you can tell there is a huge difference between these two pictures and again this was all kind of like my own self teaching so whether that's through the tutorials that I've watched and practice it all really made it worth it. So you're probably wondering exactly when I started photography. I started in 2011, August 2011 and it just kind of, I mean it's not like I was planning to be a photographer like oh I just, I was like 10 years old I was like yeah I want to be a photographer when I grow up. That never happened actually I never really crossed my mind to become a photographer until I saw people posting pictures of their photography on Facebook and I was like, wow, like, I, I love to edit pictures, I would love to edit some of those pictures. But um, the problem was that I didn't want to edit someone else's pictures because I had a particular way of doing things and sometimes you're just not inspired. If you're not inspired, you're not going to edit it the best you can. So I decided why not just take my own pictures. So. I, did, I had no idea about cameras by the way so I went to Costco and checked out some of the cameras and I was gonna buy a Rebel because I was kinda researching a little but the Rebel seemed like the most average one I guess so I was gonna buy the Rebel but um, I decided to go with the 60D because it had this cool feature where the screen pops out you can like actually pull it out and check and do stuff with that so and I had really cool video stuff so I was like why not just get that put in an extra two hundred dollars and just get that so I started with the 60D the Canon 60D and it just came with the kit lens it was the 18 to 135 on top of that I bought the 75 to 300 lens and that was like a 4.0 to 5.6 aperture but the, the thing is let me be totally honest, I had no idea that you could buy new lenses. I, I didn't, didn't even cross my mind. Like I hadn't, When I tell you guys I had no idea about photography, I didn't know a single thing. I was shooting on no flash for like a year. Literally no flash because I didn't even know how to use manual. I didn't even know what manual was. So I'm just kind of going in the dark about everything. But I mean I was learning and I just did what I could. I used JPEG. I didn't shoot in RAW and I made the best of that. So that's when I first started out. I eventually upgraded my, one of my lenses to the 51.4 until I, after I did research. So that's only after like I went online and I checked everything. So what other things did I do besides actually going out and practicing? Because if you just go out and practice, you can get better a little bit, but let's be honest, you have to do some technical things and you have to learn a little bit more about the camera to be able to get better. So the first thing that I did I was actually very curious about what lenses my favorite photographers used and normally they're not going to be like well I'll use this lens so I kind of had to be like James Bond in here like an inspector gadget if you will and go and figure out what lenses each person used and this was not easy so what I did is I like literally stalker I mean as much as much stalking as possible I looked at behind the scenes pictures these are the most important things to me behind the scenes because you can see people's setups how they put their lights are they using external lighting are they using reflectors and usually people will like show their lens or if they're taking a picture like of them shooting their lens will show so I kinda just figured it out from there and I got to the point where I had a list of all the lenses my favorite photographers use. That's how effective it was for me. And I collect behind the scenes photos. I have a folder called Photo Inspiration where I have all the behind the scenes pictures. And it's very helpful because I can see everyone set up like what lenses they, they're using, what lights, how they position the light, where the model is in relationship to the light. So very, very helpful. So look at behind the scenes photos. Sometimes they'll have it on their Facebook, uh, the photographer's Facebook. Sometimes they'll have it on their personal website, their Instagram, check everything. And also another tip, if you, the photographer doesn't have any behind the scenes, go check the stylist that they're using for that photo shoot or the makeup artist because sometimes makeup and hair will upload the behind the scenes for that photographer. So just check everything. 
another thing, let's say they don't have any behind the scenes, but you just you're just kind of curious and you know and you want to know what they're using or something. Most of the time, someone will ask in the comments like, "Hey, what lens is this?" And sometimes a photographer will answer. So check Facebook comments, check website comments and Instagram. Just kind of go through. You don't have to sit for like 10 hours stay up till four in the morning trying to like go through everyone's comments and figure it out unless it's really that dedicated which i applaud you good job another thing watching tutorials with the sound off now this might sound crazy and people get really heated and annoyed about that because sometimes i'll upload a tutorial where it's going really fast and they're like what the hell are you doing can you gotta explain everything you're doing no i don't have to explain you know why because you have to put in that extra effort to figure out what i'm doing the best learning process is seeing it's visual learning when you see instead of here you have the task of filling in those blanks and you fill in these blanks by researching experimenting and practicing so that's essentially how you'll learn. You know, I learn the best when I'm just looking at something. I actually watch most of my tutorials with the sound off. So when you see a tutorial that is silent or the person's not explaining the steps, don't freak out because it is possible to still take something away from it. If you focus on um, exactly what's going on instead of just listening to step-by-step -step instructions, you'll actually learn a lot more. And this has really helped me and it's, wor it's worked for me. So I would encourage you to at least try it out so if you see a tutorial, just put it on mute, and if it is a good tutorial, then you will take away something from it. Another thing that I was more conscious of when I was starting to shoot is uh, paying attention to the sun. Now, when I first started out, I would just went outside, and it didn't matter when the, where the sun is, I just started shooting, no matter what. Whether the pictures were a little darker, a little brighter, it didn't matter because I just fixed it in Photoshop, but now I see that it isn't really the best way to go about it. Now the first thing that I do when I go outside is I first check the weather and then I schedule the shoot around the time that I want and where the sun will be positioned at that time. So for instance when the sun is rising if you want that nice um, sunlit look then you're gonna want to go when the sun is rising or setting and that's usually in the morning or in whenever whatever part of the world you're from because right now it's setting at five and it's really depressing so I'm more aware of where the model is in relationship to the light if it's overcast if the Sun is right above her head I position her around the Sun and I work with it because I am a natural light shooter I don't have strobes or extra lights that I use I hardly use reflectors so I kind of just use the Sun in the best way possible so instead of randomly placing the model wherever she may be or wherever it looks good I position the model according to the sun and this has tremendously improved my pictures. Another thing that I did was I looked at a lot of other photography and a lot of other artwork which <sighs> kind of got me down a little because I was like oh my god these people are so amazing and I saw compared to them but you know whatever it's good for inspiration and it does give you motivation to become better. Another thing is to just look at art every day, find inspiration and it sounds kind of corny I mean it probably sounds like I'm coming from the notebook, the movie The Notebook. Just inspire yourself, find artwork, connect with other photographers, look at their work, stop comparing yourself to people, that's also another thing. Everyone has their own different style, everyone, everyone has their own different journey, you don't know what people went through to get to where they are. Same with you. And don't give up so easily because giving up and quitting is the easiest thing you can do. If you actually put up a fight, then you know that it's going to be worth it in the end. Here's another point that is extremely important, probably the most important point in this whole video, and that is don't listen to anyone. I mean, you can accept criticism, but just learn on your own. And don't take everything that people say to heart, because it is just photography. Take criticism. Criticism is completely fine. Constructive criticism is fine. Just learn on your own. Don't depend on other people's opinions so much because photography and art in general is so subjective. You can't say one thing is right and one thing is wrong because let's face it, I mean it's not like a photography handbook like hey you can't use this and don't do that. I don't know, it's like it's like everyone wants to be photography police. Everyone just wants to criticize. People want to be right fighters, you know what I mean? They just want to be correct. They don't actually have your best interests at heart and that's why when I was starting out, I didn't care what anyone told me, I just kind of went at my own pace. Because to be honest, like I didn't have anyone who was really looking out for me in the best ways. I just felt like everyone was kind of just telling me what to do because they just wanted to mold me into whatever they thought was proper. And I have my own style and my own 
um, voice and photography, so I just kind of went my own way. So again, constructive criticism is completely fine, but just do what you were going to do. I mean, people are always going to have an opinion on what's nice, what's not nice, what colors are good, whatever. I mean, let's say you keep changing your work based on what other people say. You're not going to like it anymore because it's not going to be you. It's just going to be a, a compilation of like everyone else's opinions. You know what, honestly, when I started listening to people, that's when my photography kind of started going downhill. When I actually started to do what I thought was right, that's when I finally kind of grew on my own. But let me tell you something, I was constantly researching and I was constantly looking at photography and constantly educating myself. So I wasn't blindly just going off of whatever I felt like, oh, I have a hunch. So I would definitely recommend that you do get accustomed to looking at different photography every day. Just take what people say. If you want to use it to better your photography, great. If not, then you don't have to use it. Like, you're not obligated to listen to people. Let's be honest. There's not, there's no photography, no such thing as photography police. If I listened to every single comment or opinion that I got on my photography, I would not be where I am today. There are tons of different styles and different kinds of photography that it's not right to say there. this is the correct way and this is not the correct way. Especially when I get comments on YouTube saying like, oh, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be using this lens, you shouldn't be using this ISO. Who said I, who, is there like a freaking, I mean, what is there a law of photography handbook out there that, you know, if I don't do something, if I don't use a certain setting, I'm gonna get arrested? Cause I don't know because I don't want to go to prison. But you know what? The way I'm doing it works for me. Maybe if I lower my ISO, maybe I'll be able to sleep at night. But, but you know, what if I enjoy sleeping at 4 o'clock in the morning every day? So just do your own thing. Another important thing is to make mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes. Who cares? Make mistakes. Go out there. Shoot everything really underexposed. Come back home and then you're never going to shoot underexposed again in your life. So... I mean, that's the best way to learn, right? Just learn the hard way. Personally, for me, I've learned the hard way every single time. And let me tell you, it's made me a stronger person. It's made me the person I am today. That is why I eat salt and vinegar chips, because now I can handle that. Now I'm stronger. Another thing that really helped my photography was when I upgraded all my camera equipment. And it wasn't like just one day I was like, hey, I have all this extra money, let's just buy a new camera. That really was not the case. It actually took me about a year to save up for the 5D Mark II. I had research prior to that, kind of figuring out what lens I wanted, what camera body, and the newest one that was on the market then was the Canon 5D Mark II. So I did want to use the newest one on the market, but the problem was when I actually bought that camera, I swear to you, I had no idea how to use it. It was like when I was born, it was the first time I opened my eyes and I'm like, what is going on? Like, So I actually had to learn how to use manual for the first time in my life. I had no idea, you guys. When I tell you I had no prior knowledge of photography, I didn't know a thing. And I think people think that everything was just handed to me. It was kind of like I had to do my own research for months, for months, for months. I didn't just buy something out of the blue. I did research, same with my lighting equipment. I did research for months before I bought anything. And I calculated how much everything was going to be. I saved up exactly how much I needed. And just kind of preparing and planning before I bought anything was very um, helpful to me. So that's something that I would also recommend. Don't just make an impulse purchase. Make sure that you read reviews, see other people using that same lens or camera body or equipment that you want to buy. and just get a second opinion before you buy something. Just kind of learn to use the lenses as best that you can before upgrading to another thing. As far as the Canon 60D goes, I used that camera body for as long as I could until I reached the point where I felt like I've learned all there is to learn about this camera body and now I'm ready for another challenge. So that's why I upgraded to the 5D Mark II because I was ready because I've used, I used that camera body for like a year and a half. So I felt like it was the right time. One other thing that I did, I mean, this is a given, this is why you're watching this right now, is I watched a lot of YouTube tutorials. I mean, if you see a YouTube tutorial, I probably watched it. So speaking of YouTube tutorials, I looked up this tutorial online for curling your hair, and I was like, oh my god, this looks amazing, it looks so easy. I tried to do it, and look at this, you guys. I mean, it looks decent, but it just doesn't look anything like the, the tutorial. And I watched it with the sound on. See that? See that's a difference, you guys. So hope this video was helpful. This is just my personal journey in photography, and I'm still learning till this day. So, I mean, these videos are proof of it, right? So hope you guys enjoyed it, and thank you guys so much for watching.